uh, yes. and the cow cape. Tesla, <laughs> up more than 75% year to date. Once again, look at this, hitting an all time high today. This is a year to date picture, but the green dot, that's for the existence of this company being a publicly traded company. It's its fifth all time high in six sessions, but with shares at about $300 now and a PE ratio, price to earnings ratio of more than 200, is the Tesla growth about to start to shrink a little bit or will this run continue? Time for a street fight. We have the Bulls standing by watching Jeff Reeves. He's our Bull today, InvestorPlace.com editor for the Bears, John Thompson, Vilas Capital Management CEO. John, I, I want to first talk about short interest. Since I've been covering Tesla, even before it was public, uh, uh, we've looked at people who said this can't work. Then it goes public and the short interest climbed and climbed and climbed. But suddenly it's starting to shrink a little bit. I had actually asked Elon Musk about at the time when it was skyrocketing in short interest. Here's what he said. And then we will have you comment on what he said. I think it's very unwise to be shorting Tesla. Uh, I mean, it's just very unwise. Yeah, that was 2012, and it's been an unwise plan. But you still feel right now that you need to be bearish. Why? Well, well Liz, at 200 times earnings, as you said, you know, the, the, the future of the company has almost no probability of living up to that share price. You, what you've seen in the past with stocks that have been trading at levels similar to that, like Cisco Systems back in the late 90s or mm -hmm. AOL Time Warner, they don't live up, you know, to, to, the, to the stock price. In Cisco's case, their earnings are up five-fold since 2000, and the stock is down 70% still. So the, the, even though Tesla, the company, could actually do fairly well, I think the stock's going to do lousy. Okay. Jeff, you disagree. You feel that Tesla, it is a buy at the current levels, correct? What do you think when you hear exactly what John articulates, and that is it can't really live up to a P.E. ratio of 200? I, ha I do not dispute that at all, and I think that John's right that um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that Tesla's going to fail as a company. Uh, it may succeed as a company. Eventually, it may roll back. But, but what I'm trying to do is, you know, like Scott said, uh, I won't go out and say that knowledge doesn't matter, but it's important to go with the flow, and it's important to take what the market gives you. And right now, the market's giving you a, a lot of upside potential in Tesla, and I think it's hard to bet against a company in the short term. So the, uh, the problem with a company like Tesla, much like the Apples of the world, is that people want to talk about whether Elon Musk is the next Steve Jobs or if it's going to you know, be a around in five or ten years or whether the earnings are ever going to catch up with it. I'm not that concerned about it. Like the articles that I write on InvestorPlace.com and all my takes that tend to have a much shorter horizon. I think this is a sentiment driven beast. You got maybe 30 to 60 day windows to trade the stock. And I think anybody who thinks they know where Tesla is going to be in six months or 18 months is just fooling themselves. So uh, it's anybody's guess at that point. I think that there's a big uptrend at least for the next 60 days. I'd be comfortable swinging from like around 260 in share price to maybe up above 300. Okay. But again, like I'm saying, beyond a couple months down the road, I think it's anybody's guess. That's what's going to go on. Well, here. here it is at two hundred and fifty nine dollars and ninety four cents a share. Uh, John, do you see Tesla becoming really competitive, rolling these cars off an assembly line at a much faster clip at some point? They definitely have the cool factor at the moment. People want them. Oh, absolutely. It's a beautiful car. They've done a fabulous job marketing to a very high end clientele. Right. It's a hundred thousand dollar car. The problem is, is that it has roughly half the market value of Honda, and you know their their price is if it's going to be a mass market car. And I think there's a real problem when you look at the battery and how it takes a long time to charge it, whether it's 45 minutes on a supercharger or eight hours at your house. I mean, that's a long time compared to filling up at a gas station, and the range just isn't there. You know, 200, 250 miles just isn't enough. For the you know for 95 percent of your trips it's fine, but five percent of the time you're driving your kids to Michigan for a soccer tournament or going to see grandma in in, in a faraway place over mm -hmm. the holidays. I mean it's just just not a, yeah. a car for the everyday person. Yeah, that's why I pulled my kid out of Pee Wee hockey. I was not driving to Boston on the weekend. I mean, that was ridiculous. Now listen, I have yeah, but Liz, you probably have two cars, though, right? I mean, that's the thing is that people who can afford to buy a Tesla, it's not like they're nickel and diamond here where they have a Tesla and they take the bus, right? Okay, like, but Jeff, van. Jeff, you know, Elon just came out 
and said that they're going to upgrade the warranty, which people like. People like that a warranty would be upgraded. It will affect the earnings, certainly, because that's how those things work, if it's costing them more to, to give more coverage of all of that. But, you know, I, I guess in a way people want to just hear from you that this is a company that will eventually get it right. That's what they believe about Amazon. The Amazon P.E. ratio is insane and they're not making money, but people feel like it's on the right track. Same with Tesla. Yeah, and I mean, I would actually say that to, to people out there who do kind of compare Tesla to other companies, I think that it's a weird analogy, but I'm going to say look at Chipotle, right? Like in what alternate reality are you going to buy a restaurant stock that basically trades in bean and rice for 40 times future earnings? It, it sounds insane, right? But Chipotle has been a great investment for people, yes. frankly, because there's not a lot of growth alternatives out there. People believe in the stock. And I would yeah, also yeah, say that yeah, there are other stocks out there, like, like GoPro or, or Twitter, where Twitter, I don't know if it's got longevity when it comes right. to earnings, but in the short term, I mean, swing training that you make a lot of money. So I don't necessarily disagree about the challenges in the long term, but okay. I think sentiment in the short term definitely has a lot John, of upside. John, quickly, last word. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I, you know, Chipotle's 40 times. There's a big difference between 40 times and 200 times. Okay. All right, but, but yeah. Uh, but, but future earnings, actually, it's only 72, so. Oh, uh, there you are. <laughs> Battle <laughs> Fine point of difference, uh, yeah. but she's for LinkedIn, too, by the way. right? <laughs> Non-gap, too. We want you both back, Jeff Reeves and John okay. Thompson, because Tesla is one of the most exciting stories, and they are, as I always my, remind my people, the brother. first U.S. car company to be started in 100 years. My older brother has a Tesla, and for the record, he does take the bus or the Marta in Atlanta, but that's because he's tight. But, you know, people who drive <laughs> Teslas do also watch their accounts. Good to see you both. Thank you for the bull bear debate. Trouble